now that we have introduced you to the Necrosis Brothers, uh, let's take a look at their pictures. Uh, classically liquefactive necrosis, almost always referring to the brain, results in increased fluid, mostly because if you think of the histology of the brain, once you damage that type of tissue, there's really nothing in there, no type of uh, collagenous framework uh, to make it firm, like in other organs. So any nonspecific injury to the brain will result in, among other things, uh, edema, increased water, increased uh, H2O, increased proteins, increased MRI signals. Uh, that's one way of looking at it. Here is some uh, bilateral frontal lobe uh, injury resulting in fluid and therefore uh, increased signals. Here's caseous necrosis. Uh, it's a lung. It has tuberculosis. If you cut through that lung with a regular knife, it might have a cheesy consistency, and that's why it's called caseous necrosis. However, uh, caseating granulomas are often applied as a microscopic term as well. Here is a uh, blood vessel that has a finely hyaline pinkish granularity to its wall, which has the H and E characteristics of fibrin, but many other things do too. So this is called fibrinoid necrosis. And when you hear fibrinoid necrosis, you think it's probably going to be in a blood vessel. Here is gangrene, and it's in the early stages of gangrene where there still is a lot of increased fluid reacting to it. So it's called wet gangrene, and it's called wet because it's wet. Later on, when the fluid is absorbed, uh, it's called dry gangrene. And in most cases, gangrene uh, is an ischemic type of necrosis uh, due to lack of blood flow. Uh, we talked about uh, ischemic or hypoxic uh, injuries. There's also a type of injury called a reperfusion injury where tissue is technically dead or dying or whatever perhaps in that la-la land uh, area, and you reintroduce blood flow into it, that in itself could be damaging. Because when you do, uh, you are now introducing uh, things which activate uh, the dead tissue and cause it to uh, have further damage. Uh, you can also have a chemical type of injury, and a chemical injury can be direct by virtue of it being toxic, or it could be indirect if the uh, chemical is converted into a toxic metabolite. So an ischemic injury, as you might have guessed, uh, it could be reversible, but once it's at the point where there is cell death, that's irreversible. And dead tissue, due to irreversible ischemic changes, is called an infarct. In uh, ischemic reperfusion uh, injury, uh, the restored blood flow reintroduces oxygen within cells, which could cause free radicals. It could, damages, it could damage proteins, DNA, and plasma membrane. As a matter of fact, what I just rattled off is the exact Wikipedia definition of reperfusion injury. And I am a great, great, great believer in Wikipedia, and I hope you always have your wiki on uh, your laptops with Wi-Fi while you're listening to lectures in school. Uh, chemical injury could be uh, a toxic uh, type of uh, effect due to toxic chemicals. It could be due to drugs, common over-the-counter drugs such as Tylenol. Of course, there's always a dose relationship. And uh, chemical injury uh, could cause uh, increase in free radicals within the cell organelle uh, changes or disruptions or death, as well as direct DNA damage. How do you like that for a pharmacology lecture in uh, 30 seconds or less? Let's talk about uh, apoptosis now. We already defined it as pre-programmed normal cell replacement, and we said it was different from pathologic death, which is associated with all the previous things we talked about, which caused necrosis. Apoptosis comes from the Greek word, which means falling off. So normally, when you have cells uh, in embryos which have to go away for the embryo to differentiate, to grow, to become something else, that's a normal apoptosis process. 
when we, you see a uh, endocrine gland that is much smaller than it should be because it lost cells, perhaps due to aging, that's also a normal apoptosis. When you see that the uh, growth centers of epithelial surfaces, such as crypts within the GI system, uh, have a high turnover and a high replacement, that's also a normal apoptosis. When you see inflammatory cells, uh, lymphocytes, neutrophils, macrophages in the area, and it is eventually uh, resolved or cleaned up, those cells are have gone bye-bye by virtue of apoptosis as well. Sometimes uh, harmful cells can apoptose, and that's a good thing, and it's a normal body thing. If you have a cell that uh, shouldn't be there, often, I guess you could compare this to an embryo, that is irreversibly damaged. It's just never allowed to uh, grow up. A lot of times uh, T cells, which are cytotoxic, are involved in the cleaning up uh, process as well. I'm not going to go into the uh, chemistry because I hate chemistry. There is also a type of apoptosis called pathologic apoptosis. And in pathologic apoptosis, uh, it's not a pure normal replacement. Sometimes it's associated with pathologic processes such as obstruction of a duct, tumor cells, and toxic effects of cells uh, like chemicals and pathogens. Uh, this uh, shows you that there is a spectrum between pure replacement of uh, cells called apoptosis and death of cells due to pathogens and other things. So remember, apoptosis necrosis is a spectrum. In apoptosis, uh, there's uh, a decrease in cell size or shrinkage. There's an increase in chromatin concentration or what we call hyperchromasia. The cell then becomes smaller or pycnotic. It then dissolves by a, and breaks up by a spectrum called karyorexis or fragmentation of the nucleus to karyolysis, which is dissolving of the nucleus. Often you see an increase in membrane blebs as well, and the end result of all apoptosis is that the cell will then be phagocytized. Here's a normal cell up here, and here's a cell undergoing apoptosis. You can see hyperchromasia, you can see nuclear fragmentation or karyorexis, and you can start to see dissolution of the nucleus or karyolysis. So we see pygnosis, hyperchromasia, karyorexis, karyolysis, four new words to learn. Eventually, it will result in phagocytosis by cells which are capable of phagocytosis, generally known as macrophages in which substances are then uh, completely engulfed. And here, you know that the substances in this macrophage is uh, red blood cells because you can still see that they look similar to the ones that haven't been phagocytized. Uh, we'll get into that in the next chapter. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the biochemistry of apoptosis without actually going into all those crazy equations. Let's just say there's a family of enzymes uh, resulting in the uh, digestion of various intracellular proteins called caspases, which are triggered off by uh, uh, a very complex uh, mechanism. There's also a breakdown of the nucleic acids within the cell as well. And at some point, the chemistry is then recognized by phagocytes, chiefly macrophages, which will result in the uh, phagocytosis and digestion of that apoptotic cell. Uh, let's end here because I said we only have 10 seconds left and we'll start out with subcellular responses to injury on the next one. Bye-bye.